Hello guys, in this video, let's understand the steps to implement API authentication. So again guys, just a quick recap. So this user, he wants to access this website and this website internally, it contains two different apps. One is UI app or front-end app. Let's say it's been developed in React or Angular and then back-end app, it has APIs. So our website, it is UI app plus back-end app. Now, when this user wants to access this website, so indirectly this user accesses this UI app only, okay? And as we have added Azure AD authentication, this UI app will say to the user, please go and authenticate yourself against Azure AD. So user will enter his email and password. So if authentication is successful, a token is returned to this UI app, which then passes this token to the backend app. Okay, so indirectly this user, he is accessing the APIs from this backend app only, but he is accessing it through UI app. Okay, so we will create app registration for our backend app. Again, it has APIs and again, guys, we need to expose APIs because this app contains APIs, right? And some, some other app should be able to consume those APIs. Okay. Then we will create app registration for front-end app. So it calls the APIs from backend app. So here we will add permissions to access APIs from backend app. Okay. So again, guys, this will be our front-end UI app. But as far as this tutorial series is concerned, we will use Postman as our front-end app. That is, we will call API from Postman. Okay. Then we will do the required configuration changes in Visual Studio. Like we will add tenant ID, client ID, scope in Visual Studio. And then finally we will authenticate and we will call APIs from Postman in our upcoming videos. So guys, as far as this video is concerned, we will just implement the API authentication. But calling this authenticated API, we will do it in our upcoming videos. So again, guys, the user who calls the APIs after successful authentication, he is present in tenant that is in Azure tenant. Okay. So first step, let's create backend app. So let's add app registration and let's expose APIs. So let's go to the Azure portal. So guys, we are in Azure portal and let's click on this Microsoft enter ID that is Azure Active Directory. So again, we are in this default directory or this tenant and you can see we don't have any applications under applications and users. We have only one user and that is this default user that is herschel.jain.net. Okay. So let's add application that is app registration. So here I will all applications and I will say new registration and here I will re I will name this backend app as my backend app. So of course it will contain APIs. And here let's say register. So we have created app registration for our backend app. Okay. Now on the left hand side, please follow a mouse. We can see this expose an API. So let's click on that. First step, let's add this application ID URI. So let's click on add and let's keep this app application ID URI as it is. So it is by default provided and let's say save. And now guys, just a couple of points on this application ID URI. So why we have this is again, if you see this diagram, this UI app, again, this UI app and this backend app, these both apps, they are app registrations and they are present in tenant only. Okay. So this UI app calls this backend app, right? So this UI should, should be able to identify backend app in tenant because there might be multiple applications in tenant. So to uniquely identify that specific backend app, we have this application ID URI. Okay. So we have added that. And here let's add a scope as well. So guys, why we have this scope, we'll discuss in our upcoming videos. 
but as of now just remember that we need to provide scope so again we are in this backend app under we are exposing api so first we just added this application id uri and now i will say add a scope and here i will say scope dot any so let's copy this now let's who can consent let's select this admin and users let's provide this consent display name so again i will keep it scope dot any consent description scope dot any user consent display name scope dot any and user consent description scope dot any and here now let's say add scope so that's it guys as far as backend app is concerned we simply exposed api we added app id uri and we added something called scope okay now let's go back to our ppt so yes we have added app uri and scope and again app uri it, it is unique identifier for this backend app in tenant and now let's add frontend app that is ui app so again this will call apis of our backend app so let's again go to our tenant and let's app add app registration for this so again guys we are back in azure portal and let's duplicate this tab let's click on home microsoft enter id and here now you can see applications one that is we have just added our backend app and now let's add our frontend or ui app here i will say new registration and here i'll give name, name as my ui app or you can name it anything you like so let's go down and guys again we are saying that this is our ui app and postman will be acting as our ui app so here let's select platform as single page application okay and here we need to provide the redirect URI as well. So this is the URI where when user authenticates against Azure AD authentication, a token will be provided. So this token, it will be provided to this URL. And let's see what that URL is. So it is this one. So of course, I will add this URL in the description of this video as well. So let's provide this URL. And here, let's say register. So we have created app registration for our UI app. Okay. And on the left hand side, now let's click on this API permissions. Now the first thing, let's click on this grant admin consent for default directory. So this is because see guys, the users, they are in tenant only, right? So it will need consent to access that default directory okay so let's click on this and here i will say yes let's close this now let's click on this add a permission let's go to this api's my permission uses and here let's search for our backend app so i'll say my you see this backend app which we created it it's appearing over here so let's select that now let's go down and let's select this scope so basically we are providing the permission for this ui app to access the apis from our backend app okay so let's say add permissions and let's close this now guys let's go to this authentication let's go down and here we need to select these two tokens that is access tokens and id tokens so basically see guys, when user tries to log in or when user tries to authenticate against azure ad authentication what type of token this azure ad should provide to this ui app right so of course we have provided this redirect url over here so see this redirect url we added when we added app registration entry so of course token will be returned to this redirect url but what type of token should be returned so for that let's select this access tokens and id tokens and now let's say save let's close this 
so that's it guys as far as ui app is concerned those were the steps and now let's go back to our ppt again and now let's implement the required code changes in user studio web api project so we will add client id tenant id and scope so guys if you remember in our previous video we created this web api project in visual studio and it is running as well so let me quickly open visual studio so if you see guys this is our web api project okay so while creating this project itself we enabled azure ad authentication okay but we made two changes first we added this allow anonymous so that as of now this api can be called by anybody and it does not need any authentication and just for more readability i just added this route as i think this is more meaningful that is weather slash get weather data okay and we even successfully consumed this api as well so let me run it again see guys again our visual studio project is already running so if i call this api that is weather slash get weather data let's call it and yes it is 200 okay and we get the response because it doesn't have any authentication implemented so now let's implement azure ready authentication for these apis so first let's stop the execution and again just let's remove this allow anonymous okay now let's go to this app settings.json so first we need to add the tenant id and for this let's go to the azure portal let me duplicate this tab again let's go let's go to home microsoft entry id so we are under overview in this tenant and let's copy this tenant id let's copy it Now is we need to provide client ID and as you can guess as this is our web API project which contains the APIs we should provide the client ID of our backend app. So let's again go to the Azure portal and this is our backend app you can see my backend app. So again we are in tenant under app registrations so let's go to overview and let's copy this application ID or client ID okay let's copy it and one more thing we need to provide the scopes as well okay so let's again go back to our backend app so again we are in azure portal in backend app let's click on this expose and apis and see this guy's scope so it is scope dot any so let's add this so here i'll say scope dot any so let's save and again guys if you see for this api that is weather slash get weather data we have removed allow anonymous okay so now if you try to call this api it should throw 401 so let's run our project so again it cannot find that page because we have renamed and we have created we have renamed that route so here let's say weather slash get weather data and yes now you see it says 401 that is not authorized and let's copy this url and let's try to run it from postman as well here i will say send and you see 401 that is unauthorized so it is because now we have enabled azure ad authentication for this okay so guys now in order to call this api successfully we will need to log in with one of the user we will need to generate jwt token that is bearer token and we will need to provide that bearer token as an authorization okay so that's it guys for this video 
and now let's authenticate and let's call this api from postman in our next video thank you